Hi, welcome to Tea Talks. Hi. We have Ebony with us today. Beautiful Ebony. Um, <laughs> she um, has come over to help look after me today and um, yeah, done her hair and stuff and it's all kitted out so we decided to do the Tea Talk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I haven't had a lot of energy this week but I've also had a builder fixing tiles on my balcony. So there's been about three guys that have just been coming constantly in and out of my house. And um, it's been hard to get time to film one. So thank you to the people mm. who reached out because I hadn't got one up. I should have put a notice up, but I uh, really, like, energy is pretty low. So I can probably tell from my voice. When my voice is like this, it's low energy. But anyway, yeah. So how have you been, Ebony? Had a good week? Yes, it's been okay. It's um, mm. I've had the week off work, so that's been... yeah really nice yeah. and um yeah <laughs> yeah you've been spent a bit of time having a mecca haul buying makeup yes um introducing <laughs> us to charlotte tilbury which we've never we haven't used before because it's a bit spenny but um we both got the charlotte tilbury pillow talk lipstick on today lip liner and lipstick you yes. guys you have to get on it it it's, is so nice it's obviously nice because you pay a lot more for it, but, you know, yeah. it's worth it, apparently. It's so creamy yeah. and it's so, like, it's nice. smooth. That mm. I, I will tell you, though, I was pretty pissed because I, like, um, I didn't – I'm not used to the wind lipstick, so I put the lid on it and it was so nice and then it, like, yeah, it, I crushed it a little. She forgot to wind it down. Yeah. That was upsetting, I yeah. will say. <laughs> Especially you probably wasted $15 of lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's anyway, so expensive, but never anyway. mind. Um, so we haven't had a lot happen this week. Um, mainly the kids have been on holidays, the whole three of them. Well, not the whole three, three of the four <laughs> have been on holidays. So Ebony, Sammy and Max have all been on holidays. Um, Ebony just this week and Sammy and Max for the last two weeks. So it's been really nice having the kids around um, and just spending more time with them. Max bought a car on the weekend um after his little crash that he had a few weeks ago so he's been just using my car for a few weeks and he bought this lovely little suzuki sports car it's really nice it's so nice yeah a significant upgrade from his first little shitter you know how you get a shitter for your first car yeah mine was carol it was yeah, older than carol me the carola. carol the carola yeah. was older than me she was larger yeah. than life got you to a to b yeah and max had a 2005 hyundai um yeah this so this one's certainly an upgrade so this one's a really nice little sporty car which it's really yeah. it's really nice max is so proud of himself for buying it too which is nice because he did it pretty much all himself he should be he had like, a friend help him but yeah that's he's, scary he found it and yeah and that Seriously. was you might remember a few weeks ago i was stressing out about that but i guess it's proven to me that like he can do these things himself and he did end up um he did end up doing it himself, so yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, so that's been the week. Um, as far as my condition, breathing is worse. Walking is definitely worse. Like I really feel, as I was walking from the bed to the lounge rooms this morning, I should probably be in a wheelchair for this, not walking, because um, it's painful, but also probably a bit dangerous. So. I think my walking days are really probably numbered, but that's the gig, isn't it? Yeah, it's just <laughs> the way the cookies crumble. Yeah, it's just whatever's safer now, right? So mm -hmm. um, we haven't heard anything from hospice, so I might follow up with them next week because they're supposed to be calling me a couple of times a week, and I've only heard from them the once. So, mm. um, yeah, so we might just see where we're at with that. And squeaky wheel gets the oil, maybe. Yeah. Although I think that's the thing, and I'm not really in a rush at the moment because I'm kind of feeling okay. You know how a few weeks ago I was just feeling like shit all the time and a mess, mm. and yeah, back then I would have been happy to go. And I'm still happy to go now, but I just think at this time I'm still managing okay at home. Mm. So, and I kind of feel like things align how they're meant to align. Yeah. Um. A spot will come when I need it or when I'm supposed to have it. So yeah. I just trust that that all kind of pans out mm -hmm. how it's supposed to. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, as a fun little exercise this week, because we didn't have a lot to talk about, Emily's got some questions. She just looked up on the on the Google. On the Google. And um, found some questions to ask, like to do with either me or her, or the kids in general. So, mm. she's just going to ask me those questions and um, we'll see. If you like this kind of um, thing, let us know and maybe we could do it yeah. more often or... or... You could send some questions in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fun thing to do. Yeah. So, um, the first question is, were there any similarities between you and I? As, it says as a child, but are there any similarities yeah. between you and I? I think we're both, I, I would say conservative. You're going to say not politically. I'm not politically <laughs> conservative. I'm not I'm... political at all, but... In every other way, like I feel like conservative, more reserved, reserved. Um, a we're word. not out there, <laughs> you know. Like yeah. Sammy is particularly out there. Um, Max and Ziggy have more radical kind of thinking and stuff, but mm. we're more, yeah, more timid, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. And definitely, yeah, that more conservative, kind of well behaved. Um, wouldn't do anything wrong. Not a rule breaker. Not a rule breaker. No, no. We like rules. We like rules. Rules, structure. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, I would say, are probably the the most similar. Yeah. yeah. I would say. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Um, do you have a best friend? Oh, sorry. Did you have a best friend when you were a child? If so, what were they like? As a child, I didn't really because... We mainly, like, we lived in a country town and, like, I had six girls and eight boys, I think, in my primary school. We all kind of just hung out together and, but we didn't really hang out on weekends. Like, my cousin Marina used to hang out with a bit because the cousins would do things together and the uh, sisters would do things together. We were always away on weekends because my dad was a trotting driver so we would be travelling around the state to to that. So we weren't really home on weekends to have visitors. So I didn't really, as a kid, it was more my friends, neighbours, like my neighbours and my cousins and um, sisters were who I hung out with. Mm. We lived on a farm and we would go for rides on the pony and, you know, go for hunting baby kittens and you know like that sort yeah. of stuff it was very different life to what kids kind of have now yeah. yeah yeah but sometimes that's all you need like cousins like I grew yeah. up with um Tom and Molly yeah. and until they moved away and until they nice. moved away and yeah. you know we was I imagine what you and Marina were like and yeah. then Marty and Jared yeah and, and yeah. Roger yeah 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 um what is your favorite memory of us um, Maybe do one child, one adult. I don't uh, know if you have that many. I don't know. If you... I was more thinking, like the memories that I have of you guys as kids are like, like some of those, like the scallywag pirates kind of. There was smiling. A, yeah, <laughs> like going to those places that are those playgrounds that the kids can. Like that was a lot of fun. Um, going to those playgrounds, I used to love doing that. Um, it was tricky because we couldn't take Jack to a lot of places because he was in his wheelchair. And, and it wasn't nice. Yeah, him just sitting there in the wheelchair yeah, watching he, everybody. He watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. There's many, many memories, but I think of ones that everyone because Jack used to go to those places and I would help him through the tunnels and mm. stuff like that. <laughs> I'd be absolutely buggered by the end of the day, but um, like those those sorts of things, the McDonald's Christmas, um, not Christmas birthday parties, and all the things that I sort of think back to with you guys as kids. I'm mm. um, going to parks and stuff like that because we never really had a lot of money, and mm. yeah, so we go to parks and that would be fun. The big park at um yeah, the big park at Par Mallardsland Park oh, Lake, Park Lake, Park Lake, which. When Probably you go and have a look at now. it now, it's not that big, but seemed enormous back in those days. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. Um, what were you like as a kid? I was very quiet, very, very quiet. 
probably actually anxious when you look when I think back now but um, yeah it was very quiet shy and reserved I loved my basketball um, and um, probably academically like okay at school like you did all right but um, yeah I just I, I had very low self-esteem and yeah I'm very different now I think what made me start to have to get a bit more assertive and stuff was having a child with a disability and having to advocate for his rights and what he needed. So that was the start of probably the new me. And mm. and then after I um, left dad, that was another chapter where I feel like I really truly became me. Yeah. yeah. I remember I said to you, it was only like a few weeks after you broke up, uh, you separated from dad. And I remember saying, you know, like, I don't, like, please don't take this the wrong way, mm. but I like you a lot better now. Yeah, yeah. There was no walking around on eggshells anymore. And, um, mm. I could just be me, which was really nice. Yeah. So I feel like that chapter is my favourite chapter of my life, the last probably seven years or so. I don't know how many years, probably about seven years. Um, yeah. Where I've I've done all the fun things that I wanted to do, like, well, I had started running, I think, a bit before I left Dad. But, yeah, um, just I guess it kind of coincided with the kids getting a bit older as well so um, and less responsibility for the kids. So It's yeah. funny, though, because I remember, like, growing up, like, you were not the fun, mm. like, fun mum. Like, of, like, I would have, like, friends whose, yes. like, mums would be so chill and yeah. whatever and, like, like you were not, you were yeah. like stricter. Yeah, and stressed probably. Yeah, probably yeah. stressed. Yeah, so it's funny now because now you're like friends with all of. Now you know, I am the fun mum, and now I'm you ever, are the fun mum. All the friends, all the kids' friends call me mum, and yeah, I um, but I think that comes with me being in my own house and um, yeah, not having to worry about anything that may happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, who yeah, yeah, you know, blow ups or anything like that. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when were you proudest of me? Proudest of you? Oh, I think you taking the trip overseas. Oh, really? Like, okay. Yeah, that's huge. Like, I think, because, um, Ebony, when you were, like, how old? 18, 17? I feel like you were, how old were you when you went overseas? 19. 19. Mm. Um, you went overseas for four months on your own. Yeah. To backpack through Europe. Yeah. That's pretty big. On your yeah, own. I think no plans like, of really meeting. Um, no. Yeah, yeah, you just did it on your own. Yeah. I really like, I don't know, I think I like underestimated, I guess. Like now I think about doing that and that scare, it like terrifies me. But I only booked accommodation for the first three days, I think. Yeah. And for Oktoberfest, that was the only thing that yeah. I did. And I was gone for like four months. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think that the getting there for that too, like the working two jobs and saving oh, yeah. really hard, and um, yeah, I was working like 11, 12 hours yeah, a day, yeah, six days a week, um, yeah, yeah. So I think like the effort it took to do that, but also the braveness to go because I don't think I would have been, I, I definitely would not have been brave enough to do that at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think I'd be brave enough now to be honest. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um. What's a time that you felt worried or afraid for me? Oh, well, that was that same trip. Remember when you were, ah, oh, the bombs, there started to be bombing. Yeah, um, I left on... In Budapest or was it, where were you when the bombing in Turkey? Yeah, so I was already on my way. Oh, like I was kind of planning, I surprised mum, basically. Yeah, yeah, I didn't home. know she was coming home. And so I was kind of like, not honest about where I was, I guess. Yeah. So mum would see bombings in Turkey when I, it was like the week after I was in Turkey. Yeah. But, um, um, but I thought you were in Turkey. Yeah, because I said I was. Because she was sneaking home to surprise me. <laughs> she but... was so scared. And then the day that I left, Serbia, sorry, uh, yeah, capital of Serbia, Belgrade. The day I last left Belgrade, mm. Um, was the day of the Paris bombings and mum was like, 
freaking out, yeah, obviously. I was sending her messages, you need to get out you of here. You need to come home. Yeah, like, um, you need to get out because this bombing's happening. I'm, and I was like, like oh, it's not it's, safe. I'm like, oh, it's fine. I'm in Serbia now. Like, yeah. it's okay. Like, I'm going to go back to Budapest. And, and then later that night, she just My friends walked, dropped me home. She walked in home and I was like, oh, my God, I was... I was so happy to see her, but I had been like of all days. That was the day because you're probably the most I was anxious. Really yeah. stressed about her being over there, and um, to see her, I was just so surprised yeah. and excited. So yeah, I that was when you yeah you did surprise me. I still remember your yeah. reaction. You were like, you just looked at me for a bit, and you yeah. didn't really do anything or say anything. Context. It was probably about yeah. ten seconds, fifteen seconds of like, her just like Bethany. looking at me like hi. Like, yeah. and then she's like, oh, hey, hey, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, right? Yeah. Like, because just when you're not surprised, expecting that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, um, yeah, it well, was that was good. really nice. I was glad you were home. Yeah, I was probably glad I was home too, because it was getting a little bit. I felt like it was kind of following me a little bit, like, yeah. so it was kind of, yeah. So I felt, I don't know, I just got a weird feeling, so yeah. I just went home. Um, what are your accomplishments that you are most proud of? Uh, I think I'm glad it's you and not Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm going to talk about it and everyone here's probably heard it anyway, but I think my half marathon, my tough mother, those events, like the seriously mentally tough events, um, especially considering where I'd come from, where I was like really overweight, 107 kilos. And I basically trained to start a training to lose weight and then to be able to like within a year and a half I did a half marathon and then we did Tough Mudder and I've done four half marathons now but um, those things are just such huge achievements for me. Yeah well they are for anyone yeah. you know of course yeah. that's huge. Sammy always pays me out because Sammy feels Ooh, like sorry. I should say my biggest accomplishments are my kids. But I'm like, well, I'm not talking about my kids. I'm talking about <laughs> my biggest accomplishments. So anyway, yeah. So it's those things. Yeah, that's really cool. Hmm. Um. Uh, what was the most rewarding thing about raising kids? Uh well, I think now, like, look at what I've got. I've got kids that want to look after me in my fifty-fourth year. Um. Like, it's really nice that my kids, like, I have a good relationship with my kids and yeah. they've all turned out okay, but they, they're they all decent human beings who want to help look after me, you know, in my last year or towards the end of my life, you know, that is really, makes you feel like you've done something right, you know? Yeah. Yeah, willing to kind of... Like Ebony works out of here, out of my home three days a week so she can look after me on those days and Sammy's cut back work to, to look after me and the other two are just available whenever I need them to do stuff for me. So I feel like Max is constantly in the car running to the chemist or to the Woolworths. Or yeah, <laughs> Woolworths or to the fancy bakery to get my $10 of loaf bread. Like, mm. yeah, um, they've all got their little jobs that they do and... Well, not little jobs, big jobs a lot of the time. Pulling my wedgies out of my <laughs> ass. Ebony and Sammy get that that job. Yeah. Um, because it's it's quite amazing what I can't do. Like, you just see my head, but... Yeah, you don't... Like, it's it's hard to explain because yeah. I feel like... I feel like at, like at work or something, I'll say, oh, my mum does, you know, YouTube and yeah. Instagram and stuff. But they'll just see her, like, here yeah. up. And they're like, oh, she doesn't seem that bad yeah like you know and then i kind of feel like i need to be like um, well i have a tiktok for that but yeah yeah but it, it basically i can't dress myself i can't i can't get out of bed um ebony has to get my tooth paste and toothbrush and bring it out to me because i'm too i can't stand in the bathroom to clean my teeth that just exhausts me so she, she brings me a glass and a toothpaste i can't do my hair i can't do my makeup I can't do any of that. Like, I can't hold it. I can't lift it to my face. Mm. Um, I can't even scratch myself anymore. To scratch myself, I have to, like, lift my hand and, like, get around here. And, like, like, it's really difficult. Mm. This week we've been looking for a scratcher. Um, I think there's one down at the chemist at Harbour Town. But, yeah, like, there's so many things I can't do. 
um, to go to the toilet, I need someone to drop my undies for me and pull them back up, <laughs> flush the button. It's, I can do nothing. I sit in the chair and I can do nothing. Yeah. Um, I can still feed myself, kind of. Um, it's a bit tricky, but no one's had to feed me yet. Um, but that's about it. I can't make myself any food or can't even get up out of the chair without some help. Mm. So, yeah, pretty physically disabled. Yeah. yeah. But I can still talk, which is good. Yeah, that's mm. the most important thing. Because I remember, like, you always said, like, I remember you always said, like, I'm fine as long as I can talk. Yeah, yeah. And all the things that yeah. I've lost, like the walking and the driving and all of those things, like, I've been okay with that. I've known it's coming. Mm. And I've accepted those things because they get to a point where you just can't do it. Yeah. And it's easier not to. But the voice, yeah, I've been lucky. That's still holding out. Mm. Um, what's one of your earliest memories? Oh. For me, it would be on the farm. Um, just growing up on the farm, which I loved. Um, it was a very different life. Um, and I know Dad, my dad used to always say about Ziggy, um, one of my boys, that he just needs a farm. That kid needs a farm. Because the growing up on a farm is just really different to city kid life. Mm. Um, yeah, so all those experiences that we had on the farm are things that I loved growing up so yeah mm. um last one what's the most trouble you've ever gotten in most trouble uh, god no <laughs> I don't really do things uh, car accident where I rolled my little VW oh what Remember happened? when I rolled my VW? Like many, many years ago, I was like 17 or something. And I rolled it down. My may have had a few drinks. But terrible. What'd I, you do? I rolled my little VW car. Like flipped? Yeah. You were in it? Down a hill. Yeah, I was in it. Oh, driving home. Shit. Yeah. How'd you do that? Well, it was raining really heavily. All right. And um, I was driving home and... I'd had a few drinks. Oh. This is confessions on my deathbed, people. Yeah, got anything else? No, that's it. That's about all. The worst other things I did was go to a nightclub before I was 18. Like, And if I had done that, guys? Yeah, my kids never knew I did that because I just, I was so not wanting them. Well, you can't really do it these days anyway, can you? It's pretty hard. It's too hard. Yeah, it was pretty easy to do back in my day and I always looked a bit older, so... But, yeah, that, that wasn't really naughty. The crash in the car was the naughty thing. Yeah. A, I'm, yeah, like, I'm ashamed of that. That was terrible. But really? Yeah, because I'd been drinking. It was just dumb. Mm -hmm. And it was like my... I didn't class it as drinking because I would go to surface with a friend every week mm. and she would drive one week and I would drive the other. And mm. so the week that I drove, I never drunk. Mm. And then, but we would meet at the servo where I worked. We both worked there and then drive home from there. And we didn't classify that as drink driving. So on the week that I did drink. Oh, right. We'd drive back to there and then we'd all, we'd both drive ourselves home. Right. Which is dumb. So it's only, it's only counted as drink, drink driving, driving if you drive, drive the full way yeah. home. She's so sick. And not half the way it's home. It's so dumb. Like, oh my God. <laughs> well, how we justify things hey yeah I and mean, she could have easily come and picked me up from my place but she lived a long way from work like so that would have been a bit of a pain for me to have to drop her did your parents know that you were drinking yeah no i never told them but they knew that you obviously flipped the car yeah yeah well because it was piercing down rain that night as well and it was potholes oh, on you the just blamed it on that yes yeah, so i blamed it on that yeah. Was, Is this how they're going to find out? Yeah. Oh, I think mum already knows because I think Bib told her at the pub one night. <laughs> yeah. She'd do that. The worst, that's the worst thing I've ever done. Because I don't, I pride myself on being a good person and mm. not really doing, doing bad things. So, yeah. Yeah. You're still a good person. Yeah. I'm still a good person. <laughs> I was when I was like seven, eight. You've done a, like you did a bad thing, but nobody got hurt. You were yeah, okay. Yeah, lucky, lucky.
yeah I kill it's myself. obviously the risk i like rolled three times down a bank and the battery was under the back seat of the car and that flipped out and was flying around the car the so, car battery yeah because that's oh. where the battery is in a vw that came out and was like flying around the car oh, it, was, it was terrible could have been a lot worse than what it was but yeah anyway. it sounds like you're really lucky Thank well you, did you get out completely okay yeah and my boss was driving past i got out and walked up the hill piss and my boss well i was pretty sober by this stage um and my boss was driving past patty and um who you're still friends with right yeah i'm still friends she's in her 80s and i'm still friends with her um and she was driving past so she picked me up took me home and told me just to go straight to bed and not to talk to mum and dad until the morning so that's what i did i was oh. told dad i crashed the car in the morning when he come to wake me up to take me to church <laughs> Oh, my dad, I crashed the car. <laughs> and she organised for a tow truck to come and get it and do all that. Oh, I was like, what happened to the car? Yeah, she organised that because it was a local area. Like, um, it was, we lived at Pimpama, which was very rural back in those days. It's not now. Mm. And she, because I worked at the local survey and she owned the local survey, she organised, she knew everybody. And yeah, she would have been able to someone you. to come and get it, yeah. Oh, that's really nice of her, actually. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Hmm. Anyway. That was very interesting. Let's move on. The more you know. Yeah. So that's it, is it? Yes, that's our amount of that's questions. It. Okay. Well, that's where we're at for this week. Mm -hmm. Um, We can't continue because I'll be, well, I've got nothing else bad to tell you. But, um. Be <laughs> cancelled soon. Yeah, I'll be cancelled. No one will want to be my friend. Um, oh. Yeah, no. That's as bad as it gets, probably yeah um yeah but anyway that was fun mm. yes yeah. that was yeah. fun i liked that yeah yeah so put me under the spotlight yes. um <laughs> thanks for listening and um we'll be back again next week yes hopefully on friday next week we'll see how we go mm -hmm. all right see you later bye, bye.